this video, I want to just briefly introduce a few of the ideas that go along with the concepts of myopathy and what we could call neuromuscular junctionopathy. Neuromuscular neuromuscular junctionopathy. Junctionopathy. Although no one actually calls it that but me, I think. But the ideas here are similar. With neuromuscular junctionopathy, there's diffuse dysfunction of the neuromuscular junctions. Let me just underline that. The neuromuscular junctions. So kind of diffusely, all the neuromuscular junctions, or many of the neuromuscular junctions, are abnormal. And people will often just use longer phrases like disorders of the neuromuscular junction or, dif or diffuse dysfunction of the neuromuscular junctions, whereas myopathy refers to diffuse dysfunction of skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle. So if there's some problem with skeletal muscles in large areas of the body diffusely, we call that myopathy. Or if there's diffuse dysfunction of the neuromuscular junction, you could call that neuro neuromuscular junctionopathy or disorders of the neuromuscular junction. So if we start with myopathy, there are many different kind of patterns of abnormalities we can see, but the most common myopathy syndrome starts with weakness of the bilateral proximal limb muscles. So that'd be the, the big muscles around the shoulders and the hips on both sides. So diffuse weakness, but, but particularly affecting these proximal limb muscles like that. And then as myopathy progresses, we may see weakness of muscles in the distal limbs toward the hands and the feet, the torso, the neck, and or the muscles in, of the head as well. Now myopathy, where skeletal muscle cells are having dysfunction diffusely, can be caused by lots of different types of pathology, including genetic, idiopathic, autoimmune, metabolic, nutritional, and toxic disorders. An example of a genetic myopathy is called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And Duchenne muscular dystrophy usually affects young boys and it's caused by a gene mutation on the X chromosome that causes the gradual loss of skeletal muscle cells. There are also a number of autoimmune myopathies, autoimmune, where the immune system is actually attacking skeletal muscle. And most of these actually cause inflammation of the muscle, and we call muscle inflammation myositis myositis, because this itis term just refers to inflammation. Some of these autoimmune myositides or myositis conditions only affect skeletal muscle, while some also involve inflammation of other tissues, such as the skin, which can lead to certain kinds of rashes. However, the most common cause of myopathy is probably toxic, because there are a number of particularly medications that can cause diffuse abnormalities of skeletal muscle. And in particular, drugs that are called corticosteroids that are common medications used for many inflammatory conditions. Now, diffuse dysfunction of neuromuscular junctions can cause a pattern of weakness similar to myopathy affecting the large proximal limb muscles. But what is much more common is involvement of some of the muscles of the head, particularly the eyes, muscles that move the eyes can become weak, and particularly the muscles of the eyelids that hold the eyelids up can become weak, causing droopy eyelids. And when these conditions get bad, when they get severe, then the rest of the muscles throughout the body are often affected as well, in addition to the muscles around the eyes. Many of these disorders have a characteristic, which is that they tend to fluctuate. Fluctuate meaning that the weakness that occurs often gets better and worse throughout the course of each day or from day to day or week to week, which is quite different than the myopathy syndromes. Very few of these show, the, show much fluctuation, like the disorders that affect the neuromuscular junctions do. And this fluctuation is often related to how much the muscles are being used, so that the weakness tends to get worse with muscle use, which we call fatigability. Let me just write that out. 
fatigability. And then the strength often returns with resting of the muscles. There's really one condition, one disorder that is the is the by far the most common problem of neuromuscular junctions, and that's called myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis. And myasthenia gravis is also an autoimmune disorder where the immune system is actually responsible for causing the dysfunction of the neuromuscular junctions. And most of these patients actually have antibodies in their bloodstream that bind to neurotransmitter receptors in the neuromuscular junction that cause the syndrome. The body's immune system is inappropriately making these antibodies against these receptors in the neuromuscular junction that causes them to not function properly. We'll go into more detail about these disorders and other disorders in these categories in later videos, but I just wanted to introduce these concepts and, and mention a couple of the, the major disorders that can cause these sorts of syndromes.